eight points the gap at the top with the chance to absolutely grow it by more today because we have Manchester City in today's episode. We start with Watford away, we'll then simulate Brighton at home, then it's the game away from home at the Etihad where we could at least improve whatever gap it is at the time by three points. And then Everton away at the end of March, which will leave seven games to go. I certainly don't think the uh, the gap at the top of the table will be anywhere near 21 points by the end of today's episode. So uh, we won't be assuring our title today, but it may well happen tomorrow if we can get everything to go our way in today's four games. They can see their five at the back formation with Fernandes, Longstaff and Pereira behind Antiste and Perica. Artiega, Vasquez, Osorio, Ben Wilmot and uh, Ngahia with Pettersson in goal for Watford. Uh, should, we should be okay kit-wise there. I don't know us really. Uh, I can do much more. It's either orange or black. Ah, oh, we... What? Ah, oh, it's just the just the fading. When you like that, look, it looks like it's blue. I knew it was black, but for some reason I got a little bit confused there. It might just be my eyes, but it looks a little bit blue there as it dulls out and Changes the opacity as it drops to the background. <laughs> Regardless, I mean, it doesn't really matter what kit we play into. I mean, perhaps we'll go with the orange socks. That's probably going to be easier to tell the difference. I could change Watford into their home kit, but uh, I'd rather avoid doing that. They are the home side after all. Watford versus Hull then coming up first. Ah. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more. And we hopefully will have a good haul of points today. No booing off the field this time around. Fernandez forward to Antiste. Oh, just over here. If he put a little bit less on that, certainly the attacker had the best position there on the defender. And we may well have found ourselves 1-0 down. Was Lewis Potter on side there? He was, just. And we'll go to him again here with Barnett. Scooped out wide. And Malik Wilkes is in the middle waiting for it. It may even be Pinto on the end of it. No, neither man able to get there. Madison knocks that forward to Sangare. Malik Wilkes. Oh, I was trying to turn it around. Somehow, still got possession. Charlie Barnett, edge of the box. Tried to hit it early, catch the defender out. He's not to be fooled. We're knock, knock, knocking on the door. Let us in, Watford, please. Into Sangare, forward to Charlie Barnett. Here comes Jimmy Madison again. Tell you what, they are flying in the tackle to try and get these block shots in in front of their goal, aren't they, Watford? But it's working so far. Maybe I just need to be a bit more patient. We've tried that in the past couple of games, in the past couple of episodes, and it has worked well, just being that little bit more patient. Perhaps I'm just snapping at shots, trying to just get a quick shot away, where just taking it slowly, calming it down a little bit, and playing the right pass at the right time, is what will lead to the goal! Just like that! James Madison, hole one, Watford nil, it's been coming. We showed a bit more patience there, and evidently I need to heed my own advice more often. We lead. Thank you, Jimmy. Lovely goal. We mentioned that he likes the odd goal from the edge of the box, and there's another example of it. Matty Longstaff. Is he going to get... He's going to get... Isn't he, Artiega? Tavares. Go on, walkabouts. Come on, son. You're a right back, not a centre mid. Get back where you're supposed to be. Thank you. Right, five minutes to go till the half-time. Tavares actually doing what I bought him for and putting in some defensive work. Fernandez got the option back there in Artiega. He's got Matty Longstaff there waiting on the edge of the box. Where's he going to go to Andreas? Oh, I mean, I've not got anywhere near the ball there. How I've not gotten booked for that, I'm not sure. They're going to take it quickly. They're not. It'll be Fernandez then. 30 yards out. Something from the training ground perhaps from them. Or is Pereira going to hit it? Pereira's going to hit it. It's looped well. And actually, that caused Galacci all sorts of problems. Not much power on it. But that dipped right at the last moment. Really awkwardly. And it nearly snuck in. It might well have hit the bar and gone over the line. Can we get rid of this, please, Sangare? Yes, we can. Watford fighting back in this final highlight. But, oh, Peter, you could have caught that, mate. Just giving me that little niggle in the back of my mind, thinking, mm, is one goal enough? Because they're starting to attack and they're having a little bit of success. I haven't got the goal yet, but... If they keep going like this throughout the entirety of the second half, they might find a goal. A second might be a necessity for me in this one. And I knew, I just knew, as soon as he reached to try and intercept that, Tavares, that if he caught the man as well, it was going to be a pen. 
And in the fourth minute of stoppage time, after one was added on, First time that's happened. He tried to intercept it. wasn't trying to take the man out. Oh, he's just trying to get to the ball. It's gone all the way through to Galacci. And Antiste has the opportunity for Watford to equalise from the spot. Which he does with one of the most accurate penalties we've seen in a very long time. Fair play. We'll pick that out. We'll go again in the second half. Nice ball through to Andreas. Oh, Sangari can't get it off him though. And... Peritza has played in. Apparently, according to Derek Ray, at least, it's Peritza, not Pericha. Or Perica. So, I shall call him Peritza moving forward. Andreas to Fernandez. Peritza is on the run there. Andreas, they are starting this second half the way they ended the first, aren't they? That's what I feared. I, even though I still hoped to be 1-0 in front by the end of the half. Evidently, we aren't. And... Just need to find the right pass at the right time. And I don't I didn't think that was it actually, but Lewis Potter. I should have done better there. I really should have done better. And Watford have just clicked into gear since about the 40th minute. Uh Sangare just hasn't quite that's a ball and a half. Hasn't quite found his tackling range in this game so far. Oh my god, it's gone in. Yes, Derek Ray. Oh my goodness me indeed. What a diving header by Peretza. The driven ball across. The lobbed ball over, then the first time driven ball across, and that diving header right into the corner. Should Galazzi have done better? Maybe. It was moving away from him at all times, but still. His arms still went fully extended, were they? Is that a lack of agility from an ageing goalkeeper? I'm not sure. Might just be a one-off. I'm pretty sure it is. But what a header from Stipe Peretza. Watford leads by two goals to one. Maybe some fresh legs would do, make a difference. Maybe they would. Pedro Neto, what can you do for me, sunshine? Let's bring you on for Pinto. And let's bring Wallace on for Madison. Just change you to a centre mid rather than a cam so that you get your boosts. And we'll see what we can do in the final eight minutes. But I really, at the minute, I'm not holding out much hope. Timmy Madison, though, could, in the same highlight as he's about to get substituted off, be helping create the chance to give us the equalising goal. And it Wilkes will turn inside and then get away. Here's Sangare to Wilkes again. Sangare and Pinto. Really well worked. And the two men that were involved in it, Pinto and Madison, now coming off the field of play. Uh, maybe let's not celebrate quite so wildly yet, lads, because there's the potential to still go and get another one. There is time. 87 minutes played. Three to go. Can we win it? Given away to Charlie Barnett there. Poor from Watford in the midfield. Or in the defence even. Wilkes. Wallace. Ah! What an interception by Artie Eager. It was on the run. The man on the overlap. I'm not entirely too sure who it was. But was busting a gut round the outside there. But that would have been a gift from Watford at the end. And still, Pedro Neto. I'm not going to have time, am I? There's not going to be enough time left in the game. I'm going to get it forward as quickly as I can. There might be time in the game, you know. Barnett's lost possession. It's 2-2 in response. No, we can't beat them, unfortunately. But we'll take the point when it looked like we were certain to lose until late on. For, felt like we were certain to win until uh, they scored their penalty. Oh, to have scored the penalty in the manner they did at the time they did, it's just... Oh, really, really disappointing. The gap to City will close now. We'll get to the game against Brighton. We'll simulate that. You might as well stay with me on the way towards it. It's just a couple of training uh, sessions between now and then. City still not played their match day 28. As we get further towards Brighton, it's still not been played. I'm intrigued to know why and who it's against. Still, they haven't played that 28th game. A number of other sides now played 29. So it's Brighton that they've got. Look, Brighton at the bottom, our next opponents. So it must have been moved for some sort of cup game. Uh, we'll give everything we can to try and win the title this season. I'm feeling confident that we can get a win against Brighton this time around. And it was a pretty even contest, but we won't underestimate them on this occasion. And we should, especially at home, come away with three points in this simulated game. Ready? One, two, three... A narrow 1-0 victory thanks to Charlie Barnett. We'll take it. Three points to three points at this stage. Manchester City have Sheffield United away. They were on 60. They're now on 63. They have won that game in hand. No, it's not the game in hand. They have won that game. 
Tavares has broken his ankle and is out for three months. Great, well, that's the end of his season then. Roman Bayar, welcome back to the starting lineup, Sunshine. Yikes. Okay, fine, fair enough. You just have to deal with it sometimes. An injury in a game, not one of the um, like first of the month BS injuries. Fair enough. Well, the gap at the top is still nine. They have a game in hand, but we can extend it to 12 if we beat them. And then it will still be a minimum of nine from their game in hand. So if we beat City here, it's going to be a massive step towards winning this league title. City lineup with Edison in goal as ever. Ricardo Pereira, Zagadou, Laporte and Grimaldo at the back. Neves, Sutek and Goncalves as the three behind Rodrigo, Tammy Abraham and Raheem Sterling on the bench. Icardi, Porro, Harrison. Other than Icardi, there's not really, not really anyone that stands out as a kind of danger man, really. City with a, a strongish 11, but not... The familiar from real life, strength in depth. Amount of time City could field a second string team and still win almost every single game they play is silly in real life. But, I mean, they're, they're obviously a good side because they're second in the league and pressing to try and win the title. But if things don't go well with this first eleven, I don't know if they've got much to call on on the bench to try and change things. So if we can put them on the back foot early doors, we might have them. Chasing their tails for the majority of the game. I'm going to try and get rid of this with Elder. We couldn't quite do it. Guy up just gets rid of that. Must be wary of that Manchester City press as ever. Potter's done brilliantly there and turned well too to give and go. And we could be in for an early goal. I see Pinto at the back post. I see James Madison just loitering on the edge of the box. As who will oh, look to lay it back to every pass from out wide. That ended up on its way to James Madison was meant for Madison in the first place, but we had to go had to go via Wilkes and Barnett to actually get there. By which point, shot got bloody blocked. Oh, now Sterling's in behind. He's going to be one of their danger men in this half, or in this game, in both halves. <laughs> he's so dangerous. Oh, come on, he's so dangerous for City. His footwork's exceptional. He's got a great finish on him, and obviously he's absolutely rapid, but. Defending well enough in the opening stages. That's flicked away. Lewis Potter can try and nod this to a teammate. He can't. Elder can't get to that. But we will... Oh, he's offside. We will live to fight another day. 15 minutes in. I need to be a little bit better. But equally so to City. Out to Sterling. Just lofted over the top. It's poor from Gonçalves. He's gone for the spectacular. And it absolutely has not worked. Wilkes. Waiting for the man to arrive. And it is Elder. And we'll just lift it. And we'll get to that first. This surely has to be 1-0 Hull. And is with a quite spectacular finish from Malik Wilkes. His 16th goal of the Premier League season. And we lead at the Etihad. We will have eight games to go after this fixture. And if we win it, we will be 12 points clear of City. Albeit they have a game in hand and have nine games to play after this one. But... All we can do is continue to win our games and we'll win the league. And winning this one will mean that we would win it a little bit earlier than we would if we didn't. 1-0 Hull. We've defended well so far. I need to keep that up for another 60 in-game minutes. Half an hour of a clean sheet isn't enough. Ruben Nevers gets a little bit lucky. Lewis Potter trying to close down Pereira. He can't. Thankfully, 6'6", six six, Garcia Vaya. He's tall enough to get rid of that. They're going to take this one short. Rodrigo to Sterling. He tries to cross. It falls to Rodrigo. Waiting for that turn back. He hasn't done it yet. Is that a foul? No? Okay, good. Pinto looking for Wilkes. Quickly out of your feet. Oh, and he just got caught on it. Oh, I just needed that little drag back. Oh, perfect opportunity for a counter-attack. I just couldn't quite get the turn or the pass where I needed it. And back we come towards our own goal. City are going to be dangerous throughout the entirety of this tie. They're going to be very good in possession. And we are going to have to rely on that counter-attack if we're to extend our lead yet further. Tammy with a lovely little back heel. Grimaldo trying to work it inside. But the press from City is going to be their main defensive weapon when they've had so much of the ball in my half. Let's try and kind of pin me in yet further. But if we break that press, then we are away. Just struggled to break that press on a couple of occasions here towards the end of this first half. Still 1-0 though. Yikes. Might not be for long. Tammy Abraham, we've slowed him up. Really are defending quite well at the minute. Although, I always 
I always think whenever I say things like that, I think, don't say things like that, Chase. You're going to jinx yourself. Rodrigo into the middle, away by Garcia Vaya. We haven't jinxed ourselves yet. Corner to come in from Rodrigo. This is the title showdown, basically, isn't it? This season. And arguably the most important game that we've had in the entire save to put us one big step closer to the Premier League title. But as we lead by a goal to nil at half time, if that's the case at full time, we'll have one hand on that trophy. Out wide to Elder. Lewis Potter's on the run. So's Barnett. We'll use him. Potter just ran offside menu because I delayed so long in playing the pass. Oh, trying to get a little scoot turn, but really, in all honesty, why am I trying to outmuscle Dan Axel Zagadou with tiny little Charlie Barnett? I don't think I've got anyone in my team other than perhaps Sangare that could challenge Zagadou for strength. I don't know if I've got many people that can challenge Sterling for pace either. Is that a shot? It was on its way in, actually. Just the trajectory of the ball and the way he struck it made it look really weird. And I couldn't actually tell whether that was on its way in or it was a cross or what. But I think it was sneaking in at that back post. And City have got Napoli coming up in the Champions League, meaning that their attentions are drawn across multiple competitions at the end of this season, which could again play in our favour. Not sure, actually, if they're still in the FA Cup either. They may well be. And if they're drawn... Oh, that's got to be a foul, surely. Nearly a penalty. If they're drawn across multiple competitions, then with us only having the Premier League to focus on, that is another factor that works in our favour. Now, can we bury this free kick? Laporte just trying desperately to get there ahead of Pinto. It goes down in a heat, but it definitely was a foul. Barnett on the free kick. Oh, James Madison has a banging free kick, apparently. I forgot that he's a good set-piece taker. Let's see what we can do then. James Madison. Ah, oh, too close to the keeper, Chez. Too close to the keeper. Abraham off and Mazotta on. No Icardi. They've gone with Mazotta and I don't know who that is. I can't say as I've ever seen the name before, let alone actually seen him play in real life. May even be a regent. You guys will have to let me know. He might be a city youngster that I've not heard of. I'll have a look on Sophie for... Well, now as the ball's gone out of play. Mazotta. Who are you? Mazotta. 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 Antonio Mazotta. Is that, is it Antonio Mazzotta? Marco Mazzotta, he's a regen. Marco Mazzotta. I don't know how good he is then. Stir you forward to Sangare. They've brought Jack Harrison on. It's Rodrigo that's tracking back, doing the defensive work. And if that ball had made it through, that would have been game over and 2-0. I wasn't going to miss that opportunity. Galacci claims the ball well. We'll bowl it out here. Oh, where has Suchet come from? When I committed to that throw, he was nowhere near me. We've taken it off Mazotta. Barnett, make that run, please. Come on, Lewis Potter. Challenging against Ricardo Pereira, but it's a tired Ricardo Pereira. And Malik Wilts could be on the end of this. Anywhere but there. Anywhere but there between the sticks, and that's 2-0. Brilliant connection from Malik Wilkes. If anything, he's hit it too well because he smacked it straight at Edison. Oh, my Lord. We are not going to get many better opportunities to extend our lead. And might not even have that lead. Thankfully, the man, Jack Harrison, on this left-hand side ran offside there. Otherwise, it would have been a simple layoff and we'd have been pegged back at 1-1. Pinto on this right-hand side now has a chance to get in behind. Surely, Leonardo. Keepers come. We'll lift it over him and Zagadou will clear it away just in front of the line. Bayer wins that header, but it doesn't find a teammate. If they equalise, we've got nobody to look past than... Me, for why we haven't won this game. Grimaldo lofts it in. Harrison down. Mazotta! Swept wide of the target. I'm curious to know how good he is. Because if they're going to bring him on ahead of Mauro Icardi, then surely he's got to be pretty decent. That Mazotta. I might scout him after this game, purely out of curiosity, to see how good he is. Pinto with a great first touch. And Grimaldo hasn't got the stamina to stick with us here. And can we find Keen Lewis Potter at the back post? That's the question. The answer is yes. And that's a glorious second. That's what we tried to do with Mallet Wilkes earlier on. And he smacked it straight against Edison's chest. That one straight into the back of the net. And it had to be Keen Lewis Potter that scores another vital goal for the club. We will win this tie by two goals to nil. And replicating Joe Hart's title winning celebrations, Galacci has done the exact same thing at the Etihad as we seal the victory that might well have won us the title this season. In the 88th minute, it's Manchester City nil, Hull City 2, and that gives us a 12-point lead at the top of the table. City have Burnley at home next, so you imagine that they'll win that and close the gap to 9, or back to 9, but still, 
being nine points clear with eight games to go is a massive advantage. And they might have the opportunity at the death to pull it back by one, but certainly not long enough left in the game to get anything else out of it other than that consolation goal. They'll have another corner. Rodrigo has literally no stamina left, as you can see there. Literally, the tank is empty for him. And they'll have to hope that the tank isn't empty for their title challenge after this game is finished. But it's just corner after corner after corner after corner. Let's be honest, Ref. They're not going to score two. Why are you even letting this continue? Get rid, please. Well up, McLaughlin. And away. A 2-0 win against Manchester City. We have ourselves one hand on the Premier League trophy. Let's see if we can't get a couple of fingers from the other hand on it with a win against Everton. City have drawn their game in hand against Burnley. So the gap doesn't decrease to nine. They drew 2-2 two -two at home. It stays above 10. We are 11 points clear with 24 points available and our goal difference is significantly better. So that's almost an extra point in itself. Although if that points gap is to narrow, then the goal difference would take a swing the other way as well, wouldn't it? Especially if it's got to narrow by that much. So we can't really lean on our goal difference too heavily because obviously City catches up. Their goal difference naturally would be at least equal to ours, if not higher. And you guys told me actually, and I didn't know this was a thing. James Madison, when he came in, was a cam, or is a cam still, and we played him in a cam roll to get boosts. But as his sharpness and his morale has gone up, he's actually still getting some boosts in that centre mid roll now. So I, I genuinely thought I'd have to play him in a cam roll to get any sort of positive boost from him. But if he's got peak morale and decent, if not peak, sharpness, then because he's got centre mid in his... Uh, positions we can at least get some boosts from him in that role so fingers crossed even though he's playing slightly deeper there and isn't getting as many boosts he could be more involved in linking the play from front to back rather than just being on the end of it further up because he has been a little bit lost at times when he's in a position but the obvious to go to has been Wilkes or Barnett or Pinto so uh, you can see Everton's lineup on the left hand side there Pacheco in goal Haps Alderete Nunez and Mela Ducure, Campania and Andre Gomez. Yari Vacheron, who we were previously potentially interested in. We went for Pedro Neto instead. Macias and Idrissi as their front three. Time to head to Goodison Park, our former stomping ground on FIFA 21. And try and stomp there again. Only this time in these colours and not the blue and white of Everton. It's Yari Vacheron down the right hand side. Through Elder's legs to get that to Campania. Sangare battling with him and doing superbly. Here's James Madison looking for Pinto, finding him well. Bayar's on the overlap. Wilkes is on the run. But it's not the best. The ball's over for me, to be honest. We can't get it to him. Haps to Campania. Through to Macias. Movement on the right-hand side from Yari Vachera. Movement on the left as well. Ducouri must be getting on a little bit by this point in the save. I'm surprised he's still in their starting lineup. And not only is Ducouri getting on in age, but as is James Rodriguez, who's now apparently going to be retiring at the end of this season. Shame that he never really realised fully his potential when he first moved to Real Madrid. And he's, he's obviously showing his qualities in an Everton shirt this season. But it's such a shame that he never reached the peak that he potentially could have after that 2014 World Cup. Here's Idrissi on the right-hand side of our defence for Everton's left wing role. But no way through our back line for them yet. Abdoulaye Ducouré finds him again, though. Back to Andre Gomez and Haps. Ducure, Idrissi could cross it. He's got some space, although Pinto's doing some good defensive work here. That's nicely worked. He's going to have to cross it, Idrissi, surely. He has done. And Garcia Vaya will clear it away, but only as far as Andre Gomez. Back it comes again. Haps the left back, forcing himself wide. We'll have that back. We won't. Well, we will, but certainly not legally. Cross to come in then from the set piece. Idrissi to deliver. Plenty of men in the box to aim for. And only Sangare found. 20 minutes in. Everton are trying to find a way past us. But they haven't. They have now. Typical. They haven't yet. I can't even get the sentence out before they've buried the ball in the back of the net. Yari Vasheran stealing a yard on my defenders. Just as Idrissi's done brilliant. And what a delivery. Great delivery. Galaxy can't do much about that. It's at him, but at such pace that 
just can't react quickly enough. Perhaps Vaya should have done better. You certainly would never expect Yari Vasarin to win a header against the six foot six centre back, but regardless, he has, and we are one nil down. Corner for Everton. Four minutes to go till the half time. We still trail by a goal to nil, and it may even be two if we can't win that header. What are you doing? I don't even know how to vocalise those internal feelings. I've tried to clear that by pressing and holding X. And he's chipped it almost back into his own net. What's, what's he doing? What is that from Lewis Potter? I can't even... What is he doing? That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And then nobody's able to get in the way of a poor header either. Well, all the day's frustrations are there for all Fuck my life. 2-0 Everton. Unbelievable. That's one of the most comical calamities at the back I think I've ever had. What the shit is he doing there? He's tried to chip... He's, in fact, perfectly chipped his own goalkeeper and nearly scored an own goal, which in... Actuality is led directly to us conceding a second to Everton. Madison's here again. I'm going to try and drop the shoulder and get it back to a teammate, but I can't. And we're going to be 2-0 down at half-time. City topping points against Burnley actually now looks like a great result for them. Honestly. It's Lewis Potter. Through the gap to Mullet Wilkes. This is going to have to be a monumental turnaround now. Oh. Played that straight to an Everton man and now Dekure can come away with the ball. They've had more of the ball than us, Everton, and I am yet to create a goal-scoring chance. I've had no shots in this game so far, and we very nearly went 3-0 down there. Wilkes is making that run around the corner. We need to get some goal-scoring chances, and we need to get them soon, but I can't seem to find a way past any of their defenders. <sighs> I was hoping that we were going to get a lot closer to winning the title today. And whilst we are still technically closer to the end of the season, the gap to City, provided that they don't also drop points on this match day, is going to lessen despite our victory against them earlier in the episode. So frustrating. Madison, forward looking for Wilkes. He's gotten around the outside the defender. Come on, Malik. Now bury this. And we're back in it. Now go and pick that ball up. Half an hour to go. It's... No, pick the ball up. For fuck's sake. Half an hour to go, Everton 2, Hull 1, game on again. We haven't yet really had the chance to get forward since we scored that first goal. I need to at least equalise, at least. Down the line looking for Keen Lewis Potter. In support, Mallet Wilkes. And the space has opened up here as Charlie Barnett's run drew defenders away. And Alderete with a brilliant block. Pinto, I've got Madison there waiting. Keen Lewis Potter's on this far side. Oh, but he was offside. Fucking hell. And I do still need at least one more. There's time. It's time still for two. If we're quick. And if we play the right passes at the right time. Good movement by Lewis Potter. Out of his feet. Oh, but past the post. Oh, it's taken forever to have a next opportunity since the goal. And I haven't taken that one very well at all. We've seen Keen Lewis, Keen Lewis Potter bury chances like that throughout his time here at Hull, but on this occasion, not able to do it. Can we get to that first before it potentially goes out for a throw? No, five minutes to go. They're making a change now. A guy that looks rather remarkably similar to my managerial character comes off the bench to play for Everton. Alderete is going to throw this long, and Decore will spin and get it to Campania. And out wide here to Andre Gomez, who's now apparently playing on the left-hand side of midfield. Back to Gordon. Oh, it's Anthony Gordon they've brought on. That's a nice ball over the top. Looking for Andre Gomez again. They've gotten to it with Stay, but still can't get it off them. No, oh, they're going to get a throw. It's going to be a defeat to Everton. I can't believe their second goal as well. I'm just... I'm still not really sure how to properly explain how that came about. Andre Gomez back to Anthony Gordon. Two minutes added on, but that two minutes is nearly up now. And Rafael Leal's just ghosting past players. And even if they don't score here, we won't have the chance to counter. Gordon back out to Andre Gomez again. Bayar with the tackle, but that'll be game as I loft it forward. Trying to build again. The referee seals our fate and we lose at Goodison Park. By two goals to one. 
we can only just hope that City drop points again. It's not really much of a hope, though, is it? You don't envisage them doing so for a second time. They haven't played yet. We have seven games to go, and our gap at the top could be down to eight points if City win their game in hand. We have West Brom, Arsenal, Wolves and Burnley tomorrow before Tottenham Man United and Sheffield United the day after. The season is not done yet. And that frustrating defeat to uh, Everton is going to mean, mean that our season just drags on that little bit longer. Or at least we can't guarantee the title for that little bit longer, which is really fun. I'm sure we'll still win it. I'm sure we'll still win it, but... It would be one hell of a bottle if we don't from here, wouldn't it? Join me tomorrow where we will hopefully, potentially, if City do continue to drop points, seal the title with three games to go. It's a long, it's a big ask, but it could be done. I'll see you then.